Have you ever tried plugging in an external monitor to your MacBook Pro? Are you in adapter hell? Does the sight of adapters hanging out of your computer make you cringe? Are you struggling with only four USB-C ports? Well, me too. Coming from a desktop PC, I appreciated just sitting down and not having to plug in the mouse, the keyboard, the speakers, the monitors, and a charging cable all to just get working. I could just sit down, turn it on, and it was ready to go. After I sold my desktop PC and moved to a laptop only setup, I loved having all my stuff on the one device and being able to have that uh, data accessible anywhere I was. What I didn't love was when I actually wanted to work at my desk, I had to pull out my power cable, plug it in, and then plug in three other different adapters to get all the monitors behind me working. I actually have four monitors, including that TV, and so I couldn't even use the fourth monitor because I ran out of ports. Also, the orders of the adapters mattered. Sometimes I'd plug in the adapters in the wrong order, like put the top one where the bottom one was, or vice versa, and the orientation of my setup would change, and I'd end up with an upside down monitor, or another monitor rotated 90 degrees. Not really ideal. I looked high and low for a solution. I spent a lot of time looking at USB-C docks, and the far more expensive alternative of Thunderbolt 3 docks. The problem with USB-C docks is that they can only output one unique display at a time. So I could only duplicate the one output, which wasn't really helpful for my use case. With Thunderbolt 3, I found docks that would output two 4K monitors at the same time, but no two, uh, no three or four monitor options, and not to mention how expensive these docks were. So instead, I settled on an external GPU, specifically the Razer Core X with a Radeon 570 graphics card. The idea behind this wasn't to play games. In fact, I hardly even play games at all, and I don't even have any installed, but instead to drive all the monitors at my desk. By using an eGPU, you get all the benefits of a regular graphics card, all connected to your laptop via the one Thunderbolt 3 cable, which looks like a USB-C cable. In addition, that same cable can actually charge your laptop. So, with that one Thunderbolt 3 cable, my laptop charges and then also gives me access to one HDMI and three DisplayPort outputs. Perfect. I bought the Razer Core X brand new while it was on sale from the Microsoft Store here in Australia for $400 Australian. I then hopped onto Facebook Marketplace and bought an AMD Radeon 570 for 100 bucks Australian from a guy who had about 50 of them. So obviously he was doing some kind of crypto mining currency thing. While normally people tell you to steer away from cards like this that have, um, you know, that have been mined on, heavily used, because I'm not using it for gaming, I didn't really mind. I just wanted all those display outputs, and so I scored the graphics card at a heavily reduced price. Mac OS only supports certain AMD cards, so this was essentially the cheapest option to populate the Razer Core X and get my displays working. Naturally, I wanted to see if the RX 570 could help me in anywhere else in the system, namely in video encoding. I'll put the results up on the screen now, but the summary is no, it couldn't. I used Premiere Pro CC 2019 to perform some tests and found that results were almost identical comparing the RX 570 to the onboard Vega 20 graphics, with Quick Sync enabled. With Quick Sync disabled, we get about a 10% cut off render times with the RX 570, but I'm not sure why you'd turn this off. On a lot of forum posts I've read, Premiere Pro users seem to get the most performance increase with CUDA technology, which is exclusive to NVIDIA graphics cards, so I'm not sure I'm able to get massive gains with the eGPUs on my Mac, considering that they only support AMD graphics. With that said, the latest developer beta of Mac OS supports the new 5700 and 5700 XT graphics cards from AMD, so I wouldn't mind trying them in my Razer Core X and then running these tests again. Let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in. So, in summary, I spent $500 on the Razer Core X with the AMD RX 570, which is actually $30 cheaper than the only Thunderbolt 3 dock that Apple sells and includes three more display outputs, although missing USB, Ethernet, and other I.O. that comes with it. But, as a wireless keyboard and mouse user, I didn't really need any of these ports. And, if I ever wanted to upgrade my graphics card in the future, all I need to do is actually purchase the new graphics card and swap it out. Try doing that with your MacBook. It took me a while to pull the trigger on purchasing this setup, but now I'm wondering why I didn't go ahead sooner. The convenience of plugging in a single cable to charge and connect all the monitors with no display configuration required is worth a lot to me, as it was often the difference between setting up and doing some productive work at my desk first just bringing the laptop to bed and watching Netflix or YouTube. If anyone has a similar setup where they run multiple monitors and a MacBook Pro as their daily driver, I would highly recommend this exact setup that I've chosen, which is the Razer Core X and then the cheapest supported graphics card that they can find. I've had no problems at all with the Razer Core X and looking on reviews online it seems to be the most reliable eGPU enclosure currently available. Other eGPU enclosures have extra I.O. available, but the common problem is bandwidth of the USB ports eating into the graphics bandwidth and causing display issues. 
The Razer Core X is a great, safe bet, and as I said earlier, as a non-gamer, the RX 570 does me just fine. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and post your experiences with eGPUs down in the comments below.